So today we're really starting in on the calculus stuff. After the last couple days where I just had you practicing stuff that you've seen in pre-calculus, really those were strenuous days. Uh, the last couple days where you're just going through the, that other material and practicing it, you're going to find that that was tougher because I was really making you remember a lot of stuff from a lot of different places that you haven't done in a while. But now we're going to start introing some of the stuff that you're going to be needing to know for calculus and starting to apply some of those skills. Well, yes, we'll still be weaving in some of those pre-calc skills and keeping on practicing them because you're going to be needing them going forward. And the first of those that we're going to be seeing today is this whole idea of slope. In fact, you could really say that calculus is really just about slopes. That's really all it is. It seems very simple, and in a lot of the time it is. Just there will be some parts of it that will seem more complicated, but we'll go through those together, and we get to take the time to go through those together, which is one of the best things about it. So since we're starting by taking a look at slope here, and that's a big theme, we're going to take a look at some slope graphs a different way of making a graph than you have before. So here on the left I have some original function. You can see a graph there. What we are going to do is we are going to graph the slope of that. So notice while the original one is graphing x versus y, we're going to be creating a graph of x versus m. m of course being the slope, right? Alright, so as you're taking a look at this, we're going to be graphing the slope of this, which basically means we can go point by point through this original graph over here and actually figure out what is the slope at any given point and plot it. So like, let's start at zero. Always a good place to start when dealing with graphs. What is the slope at that point? What is the slope at the point zero, zero here? So like what we're doing, let's take a closer look here. We need to figure out what is the slope way up in here. Well, slope of course is rise over run, right? So how much is it rising? How much is it going over in that part? So what makes this tricky is that there are two different ways you might look at it. Uh, one way is that you could say it has a slope of zero. There, there is no slope there because you're just talking about a point. There is no slope just at a point, right? Because it's just a point. It's not going anywhere from there. And yet, we could also say there is a slope because you can see that as it passes through there, there is a line. And that line has a particular slope. That's what we're looking for. And in the way we discuss these types of problems, we're actually going to be doing it in terms of the whole idea about, yes, there is a slope. Basically, the slope of the curve at that point. So we will be doing it that way. And so in this case, yes, it is in fact going to be 2 there because you'll notice that as we go through that point this is a line and it keeps going up 1 over 2 up 1 over 2 and so on as we go through so I'm gonna go over here to my slope graph and I'm gonna put a point at 0 because remember the original X was 0 where I just found that and the slope was 2 so I'm up there at 0 2 for my first point Okay. Now, having seen that one, the rest get a little bit easier. What is the slope at x equals 1? Yeah, that is 2. So when x was 1, my slope at that point was 2. So I put the point at 1, 2. Okay, let's grab another point. Uh, I want to go something a little bit further out. Let's go out here. How about text being 4? What's the slope at that point? The slope there again is 2. So when x was 4, my slope was 2. Which makes sense, I hope, because it's a line, right? And a line has a constant slope. The fact that it is a line means that the slope everywhere on it is 2. And so, if I plot all those points and see where that's going, then my slope graph is going to look like this. Now that's just from negative 5 to 5 because that's all the graph I can see. But if we assume it's a line and keeps going following the exact same pattern even when it's off the graphing grid, we could even fill in the rest of the graph there where it's just a horizontal line. Because what we're saying is that 
this graph, this original graph over here, has a constant slope of 2. And so, at every single x value, my slope then is 2 as we represent that graphically. This transition, this idea of comparing some original function to its slope, again, is actually very fundamental to calculus. When we get this idea down, you'll be amazed at how much that means you get calculus. It's just a matter of the execution and the rules from there. All right, let's take a look at another one. It looks very similar, but it's a little bit different. Again, take a moment and think about it. How will this graph of our slope be similar or different? All right, so let's go ahead and just grab some points here. Uh, let's again start at zero. What's the slope of our graph at that point? Yeah, it's two again. Because you'll notice that as we're getting closer and closer to that point, we're still following the exact same slope everywhere around it, where it is going up two over one, up two over one, therefore it has a slope of two again. But it is a line still, right? So it has a constant slope, so everywhere it will still have this exact same slope. And so your graph is once again a horizontal line up at 2. Notice our slope graph here is exactly the same as the last slope graph that we did. Was the original graph the same? No. But its slope graph is. And sometimes that can be a brain bender for people. So we need to see that that can happen. Because all we care about is just the slope. If I move the graph up, that didn't change the slope. Because that's the only difference between the original graph here and the last one is this one was just moved up. That didn't change the slope along the way. All right, so now we can take a look at something maybe a little trickier. Now we're going to make the slope graph for this function. Good one also to copy down the original and then the slope graph as we make it. All right, so we're going to attack this by again going kind of in looking at various points and saying what's the slope there. And in the previous ones I started at zero, so I'll start at zero again here and figure out what's the slope there. Well, if I zoom in really close to it, notice it's basically horizontal there. What is the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Because you are not going up at all, but we are going over. It's zero divided by something. So then we are going to end up getting our first slope at zero, zero. All right, let's go to the right now. Uh, as I take a look at my graph over here, I see it actually going through a point at four. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. But the question is, what is the slope going through there? If I just look at between that and someplace else where it looks like I know a point, you know, I might be saying, well, what's the slope there? But I might also be looking at what's going on heading over here. Are those going to have the same slopes? No. How do we know what to go to? It actually comes back to an idea of a tangent line, where if I draw in some line, actually there's only one for any given point, that is basically just tangent to our curve, so it's just barely touching the curve at one point, that's the slope of our curve at that point. And we could use that to figure out what the slope is. So like for that one that I drew in there, it's kind of rough. Uh, I'll go from here to here. Looks like I'm going down one and over two. So that to me looks like a slope of negative one half. All right, so at four, I got negative one half. Let's go ahead and plot that then on our slope graph, go over to four and down just a half. Now the nice part is that this graph looks like it's pretty symmetrical. So like if I look over here at negative four, it looks like it's basically the same thing. It's just flipped over. So then what would my slope be if I was looking here at uh, negative 4, looks like positive 1 half, doesn't it? And so that's going to be a positive 1 half on the left hand side at negative 4. Yeah, 
Well, so far we don't necessarily know what our slope graph is going to look like yet though, right? Is it going to be a line? Is it going to be a, more of a curve? Let's actually grab some more points to find out. And I want to get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. So let's grab another point uh, here. As I look down on the right hand side, you know, there's not another, there's not a lot of other clear points that it goes through. I'm going to jump ahead a bit. I'm going to jump ahead out here at nine. What's the slope at nine? Take a moment and estimate. What do you think that would be? All right now, in order to do that, basically what you're doing is you're looking at the graph and trying to envision, okay, that tangent line, what would that be? If I was doing this on my paper, I'd probably grab a ruler and I'd hold the ruler up to the curve at that point and use that to kind of envision, okay, where's the slope there so I could get a good feel for where that is and just how steep it is. Now I went ahead and drew in an estimation here, which to me looks like it's at negative 2 for my slope. So I'm going to call that slope negative 2 there at 9. So we'll go out to 9, go down 2. What about at 10? I'm only going over one more, but what does it look like the slope is here? This is where things get tricky, right? And it looks like our graph is basically vertical here. If it is, that would be like undefined. Uh, as we get really close to that, it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. It's actually getting super steep. In fact, it's getting very close to a negative infinity. And yes, infinity and negative infinity are going to be concepts we deal with in here. Now, since I know it's getting very, very steep, I'm going to just estimate that down here, it's going to be way down there. It's not quite over at 10 because that's where I expect it to be just way out there. I'm going to estimate that it's down there. Now we could do the same thing on the left hand side. At negative 9 I could see that it would be about 2. And as we get close to negative 10 it's getting close to infinity. It's getting very very steep there. And so you can then start seeing what this graph might look like. Notice it's a curve. In fact it looks a lot like, I'm not saying it is, but it looks a lot like a cubic function. If you remember what your cubic functions look like, especially from last year, where it looks like it's flattening out, but then it's getting very, very steep very, very quickly as we go along. And so that's how we'd make the slope graph. Oftentimes they are not as simple as our lines were, but we are going to have to be able to graph them nonetheless. And so you're basically going to go point by point when it's not obvious what it should be.